ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू अगेन कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द भगवत गीता एज इट इज सेशंस वी विल बी कवरिंग वर्सेस वन टू टेन फ्रॉम चैप्टर फाइव कर्म योगा एक्शन इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस so as usual we will read the sanskrit verses first and the translations and then we will discuss the verses chapter 5 karma krishna yoga karma yoga action in krishna consciousness verse 1 अर्जुनुवाचा सन्यासकर्मण कृष्ण पुनर्योग शंससी यछ्रेय एतोरेक तन्मे ब्रूहि सुनिश्चित ट्रांसलेशन अर्जुन सेड ओ कृष्ण फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू आस्क मी टू रिनाउंस वर्क एंड देन यू रेकमेंड वर्क विद डिवोशन नाउ विल यू काइंडली टेल मी डेफिनेटली विच ऑफ द टू इज मोर बेनिफिशियल वर्स टू श्री भगवान उवाच संन्यास कर्म योग तयोस्ति कर्म संन्यासा सत्कर्म योगो विशिष्यते द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड रिप्लाइड द रिनंसिएशन ऑफ वर्क एंड वर्क इन डिवोशन आर बोथ गुड फॉर लिबरेशन बट ऑफ द टू वर्क इन डिवोशनल सर्विस इज बेटर देन रिनंसिएशन ऑफ वर्क अर्जुन एनालिटिकल स्टडी ऑफ द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सांख्य दोस हू आर एक्चुअली लर्न इट से दैट ही हू अप्लाइज हिमसेल्फ well to one of these paths achieves the results of both verse 5 yat sankhya prapte sthanam tadyo gairapi gamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha yah pashyati sapashyati one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level sees things as they are verse 6 sanyasastu mahabaho dukham aptu mayogatah yoga yukto munir brahma na chirena adhigachati merely renouncing all activities yet not engaging in the devotional service of the lord cannot make one happy but a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay verse 7 yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriyah sarva bhutatma bhutatma kurvanna pina lipyate one who works in devotion who is pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him though always working such a man is never entangled verses 8 and 9 naiva kinchit karomitti yukto manye tatatva vit pashyan shrinvan prashan jigran ashanan gachan swapan swapannas shwasan verse 9 pralapan visarjan grihanam unmishan nimishan api इंद्रियान इंद्रियार्थेशु वर्तांत इति धारयन अ पर्सन इन द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस ऑल दो एंगेज इन सीइंग हियरिंग टचिंग स्मेलिंग ईटिंग मूविंग अबाउट स्लीपिंग एंड ब्रीथिंग 
always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all because while speaking, evacuating, receiving or opening or closing his eyes, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged with their objects and that he is aloof from them. Verse 10 Brahmana Brahmanyadhaya karmani sangam tyaktva karoti yaha lipyatena sapapena padma patra mivambhasa Translation, one who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord is unaffected by sinful reaction, sorry, action as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. So this is a new chapter, chapter number five, Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. And last time we finished chapter four, it was Transcendental Knowledge. Chapter five is all about uh, Krishna's desire. What are, uh, meaning following all the rules and regulations and also following the instructions of the spiritual master. Spiritual master, one who is coming from a lineage of uh, uh, Krishna and uh, he's connected to Krishna from his previous acharyas right up to Krishna and uh, he is going to give us a connected to the lineage in the tradition and show us the right ways how to perform the devotional service for Krishna. So as we know that uh, Karma Yoga and Pure Gyan Yoga Fusion of these two is actually action in Krishna consciousness. And we know that all of us are active all the time, constantly, even if we are doing something or not. If we are not doing anything with our hands, then our mind is constantly busy along with the intelligence guiding it into making plans for the future, and sometimes we are so engrossed that we miss the present in just uh, uh, making the plans for the future. And the thoughts, it everything starts from the thoughts, from thoughts to the action. And when the actions are done over and over, they become our habits. Like they say, it takes 21 days to repeat an action for it to be manifested as a habit. And... I'm just saying from the famous saying, as you can, as you must have already understood. And th these habits, they make up our character. They actually start defining us, our habits. And, uh, and when there is a collective group of people living in a society, their collective characters, they define a society. And uh, the character of a person defines a person's destiny or the destination of a person where this person is heading to. So in this chapter we will be guided by Krishna that how to take the right step so that we can follow the right direction and we are not just uh, going uh, uh, haphazardly in a, on a journey without any proper guidance and it's it's not easy to uh, progress in the journey of life because there's so much so much involved there's so much uh, uh, there are relationships there are friendships there are your professional uh, uh, commitments your uh, household duties and so many other things uh, a person is never free the moment a person is born, a person gets uh, entangled into so many relationships and, and eventually when they grow up, they think they will become free, but no, they become more and more uh, entangled into the uh, into a journey called life. First person is child, then a student, then, um, then they might get into relationships and then they're busy in 
so every time each step the life gets more and more complicated so a proper guidance is needed for a person that how they have to go about into this through this journey of life so in text one first verse uh, Bhagwan is telling Arjun that uh, you that you are asking me again and again sorry Arjun is saying to Krishna that Bhagwan you are asking me to renounce the whole the work completely and then at the same time you are asking me to do work with devotion so Arjun is asking Bhagwan that please explain to me which is more more uh, useful of the two that which work is not going to bind him to the material world in in performing that work so bhagwan is actually telling arjun that he has to renounce all the work he, that doesn't mean that he, he doesn't has to do anything it means that uh, which means he has to give the results of the work to bhagwan then that would not bind it to uh this uh, this samsara or the world so he doesn't has to take a sannyas and go and live in the forest bhagwan doesn't mean to say that to him so bhagwan is clarifying that and in further in text 2 bhagwan says to arjun that uh, renouncing the work and work in devotion both are good for the liberation but of the two bhagwan says to him that work in devotional services is much better than renouncing the work work or the or giving up of the work completely so if you are doing something for your own senses uh, you are doing for gratifying your senses for, for pleasing your own senses then that work is going to bind you for the with the uh, material world and it will it will be kind of bondage but at the same time if you're working and you offering those fruits of your labor to bhagwan then that rope will be cut now bhagwan keeps explaining again and again to uh, arjun with lots of examples bhagwan uh, propat quotes uh, bhakti rasamrita sindhu and uh, how a person who is eager to achieve the liberation renounces things relating to supreme personality of god at thinking them to be material their renunciation is incomplete renunciation is complete when everything in existence belongs to the lord and that a person is not taking the proprietorship or a kind of adhikar which is uh, said in uh, hindi over anything then it is a proper renunciation so everything you have to employ in the service of lord in verse 3 bhagwan is explaining further to arjun that a person who is neither hateful or desirous of the activities or fruits of the activities that person is considered always to be renounced that person is free from the dualities the dwandvas for example the hot and the cold loss and uh, gain etc and that person is completely my uh, liberated o mighty armed o mighty armed is uh, arjuna has been called here mahabaho in this text so we have to rise above the dualities god says then renunciation will be complete so one shouldn't feel very puffed up if they are able to do something nicely and if they are labeled as failure in a in this society then again one should not feel bad but because the activity is not going to go in vain every time there is some lessons left after the completion of certain activity whether the activity is completed successfully or not successfully so in verse 4 krishna is further telling arjun that the ignorant speak of the 
karma yoga different from the sankhya yoga the study of the material world is sankhya and the devotional service here in this verse is termed as karma yoga so the the aim of the analytical study of the material world or the sankhya yoga is to find the soul of the existence in purport by this telling and the soul of the material world is vishnu or the super soul super soul as you know is is uh, sitting within our hearts next to our uh, souls which is which is also called parmatma like sitting like two birds on a tree now devotional service to the super soul is going to be beneficial because that is for lord now one process propat says is to find the root of the tree and the and to root the sorry water the root the the student of the sankhya yoga or the material world yeah this person is going to find the root of the material world and they will start watering that root but the real the real student propat says is going to find the real root and which is of the material world in of the the student of the sankhya yoga and then they will root this properly and engage in a perfect knowledge and in the service of the lord therefore in a sense it is told that there's no difference between the two because the aim of the sankhya yoga and aim of the karma yoga in the as which is class as devotion service is same is to serve vishnu so the ultimate goal uh insight is same for both the yogas that whether it is sankhya yoga or the karma yoga so the the ones who are not who don't know the uh ultimate end result that the purpose of the both is same those who don't know that the purpose of sankhya and karma yoga are not the same but one who is learned knows the unifying aim in these different processes so the 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 intelligent one they knows that they understand that the aim between both the processes is same is to serve the lord ultimately in verse 5 krishna is further telling arjun that uh, that the position reached by means of analytical study or the sankhya yoga can also be attained by the devotional service so therefore it both have to be seen on the same level so when one is detached from the karma yoga then it becomes bhakti yoga because you are doing everything you are doing in your daily life but you are doing it offering everything to the lord itself so it becomes bhakti yoga in verse 6 krishna again reiterates that uh, just announce renouncing all the activities and not uh, doing the devotional service of the lord cannot make one person happy but, but a, thought, a thoughtful person who is uh, doing the devotional service can achieve the lord without any delay so even uh, it's, it's uh, said in the purport by propa that there are two classes of sanyasis or the person who are of renounced order of life the mayavadi sanyasis they are engaged in the sankhya yoga and the vaishnav sanyasis are engaged in the bhagavatam philosophy coming uh, now what what's the difference between the two is that the mayavadis they will give a spin of their own uh, interpretation when they give the commentary of the of the when you read something written by them it will have their own spin their own speculations will be there but the students of the vaishna philosophy when vaishna the vaishna sanyasis they will be engaged in an authentic study it will be from the written in the tradition following uh, coming from the shastras itself they they're not going to add or take away anything from the shastras so the vaishnavas 
Sanyasis are authentically engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Whereas the Mayavadis, they are actually uh, kind of uh, misleading the society into more and more materialistic way of life. How to attain this quickly, how to attain that quickly, if you worship the Lord like this and like that. So this is where the difference comes between the two. Now in verse 7, Krishna says, A person who is working in devotion, in bhakti, who is pure soul, who is con who has controlled his mind and his senses, is dear not just to everyone, but is also very dear to the Lord. Such a person might seem to be working or uh, engaged all the time in material work as well, but he is not entangled because he has understood that proprietor, controller and the enjoyer is the Lord and everything is offered to the Lord. All his fruits of work and uh, actually he even sometimes plans uh, his work accordingly that the devotional aspect of the of the mundane life and the devotional aspect don't get mixed up but the devotional aspect is always the supreme is the paramount in their activities in verses 8 and 9 Krishna continues that a person in divine consciousness he will be doing all the normal activities of a daily person's life for example seeing resting, hearing, smelling, eating, sleeping, everything. But this person knows that when he is doing all the activities, he is not the doer. The doer are his senses. They are engaged. His karma indriyas, so as to say, they are engaged. And the, uh, and the jnana indriyas as well, which is, you know, the sight the touch, the hearing sense, then working senses are hands, legs. So and all, everything is uh, involved in working. This person, then they understand that they are actually different from this, these activities. The material body is working, but they are aloof from them. They are separate from them. Because they understand they are not this body, they are the soul. So they, this person can uh, uh, carry on in pure Krishna consciousness when they understand who is the, where is the consciousness coming from, from in their body and how everything is uh, being employed in the service or this material body is working just because of the consciousness and the consciousness is coming back from Krishna so they understand the Krishna consciousness properly and thoroughly and this person won't get affected by any of the actions of their senses and they can be engaged in the service of the Lord eternally so lastly on in verse 10 it is told by Bhagwan that a person who is performing his duty without attachment Surrendering the results to the Supreme Lord is not affected by the sinful action as the lotus. So the analogy is given off of the lotus who is there in the lake or a pond in a pond of muddy water, very shoddy looking pond even. But still the lotus is perfectly clean, the leaves are clean. So this is how that person is able to go through this life so in this verse Prabhupada is explaining to us that Brahmani in this verse is used as Krishna consciousness and the material world is the total manifestation of the three modes of material nature as we always uh, reiterate this point and Prabhupada also keeps reminding us in his purports again and again and that's why how we behave, how we go about in our life in, in any given 24 hours is due to the modes of material nature. In the early, from early morning, from Brahma Murat, uh, an hour and a half before sunrise to up to 10 a.m. in the morning, it's uh, 
the mode of goodness which is uh, which is which is the which is the kind of purveyor and uh, uh, under its jurisdiction we are performing our activities and from 10 a.m. till uh, till 2 p.m. Uh, from sorry from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. in the evening it is mode of passion so it's uh, I was reading actually earlier on uh, that uh, in the in the early morning because the sun hasn't risen so there's a calming effect of the moon that's why it is advisable for people to get up and do their daily sadhana to their uh, chanting and everything and once the sun is out sun will make a person go 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 then you can't sit down unless you are ill or very tired or something you will have to work under the mode of passion you will have to be work oriented at that time and from 6 p.m onwards in the evening till till the night till the next morning uh, early morning is the mode of ignorance so a person will have to be working under these modes whether we like or not whether we think that we are not going to be affected by them it's not going to happen this is how this world material world has been created but if you are aware of your position in relation to krishna then you can uh, perform your uh, actions without uh, uh, with the all the rules and regulations in your mind if you are following a guru parampara if you have got a spiritual master because you'll be following the rules and regulations so it won't be difficult for you the goal the ultimate goal for you is uh, very clear in your mind like propat says to us again and again that we are actually doing bhakti because we are we are we are students of uh, krishna and we are actually trying to learn how to give up this life in the end in the in remembrance of krishna so that our the next journey of our soul is going to be clo getting closer to krishna and not coming back to this uh, grind of uh, material world and doing uh, the same uh, performing the same uh, dreadful activities over and over again sleeping eating mating defending and uh, all the species around us are also doing the same thing so we have to get out of this and this is only going to be possible once the we are going to follow the path of the karma yoga with the spiritual development of our ourselves while while uh, doing everything in this world so this is what is the essence of the first 10 verses of uh, karma yoga action in krishna consciousness so tomorrow we will continue from verse 11 and it's nice to be back with the bhagavad gita as it is sessions i hope you are looking forward to the damodar month like everyone else it begins on the 31st of uh, october which is not far which is uh, going to be on saturday only two days away so uh, thank you for joining we will continue with this. I will try to have uh, at least few sessions of uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is in the week from now on because I've missed them as well. Yes, the reading of the Ramayana will also continue side by side. Thank you for your association. Have a nice day. Hare Krishna. Hare Yamdatsar.